Hello YouTube, PowerMax here, and today on Tutorial Tuesday, I'm going to teach you about how electricity works, and what volts, ohms, and amps are. Let's start with volts. So what are they? Well, a volt is just a measurement of voltage, electromotive force, or just potential difference. That isn't a very helpful definition. So, here I've drawn two blobs, and inside them you can see that they have charges. Here we have a net negative charge, and here we've got a net positive charge. Now to understand how these charges can exist, we need to understand a little bit about atoms. Now as you know, all matter is made up of atoms, with a few exceptions. Here I've drawn a basic lithium atom, and you can see that there's three protons, three electrons, and four neutrons. And that makes up a basic atom, such as lithium. Now to give this atom a charge and turn it into an ion, all we have to do is remove either some protons, which is very difficult and requires nuclear science, or remove and add electrons. If we remove this electron here, now we can see we have more protons than we do electrons. We have one more proton. So this whole atom now has a net positive charge. If we add extra electrons, now this atom has an extra electron, and it now has a net negative charge. This atom wants to get rid of that negative charge, and it will do whatever it can to get rid of it. And the same goes for when an electron is missing a charge. It's going to do anything it can to steal an electron from another atom that doesn't want it so badly. And this is how the charges work. Now imagine we have two surfaces, here and here. Right now, neither surface has a net charge to it, so let's go ahead and give this surface a positive charge. And let's give this surface a negative charge. Now voltage is just a measure of how badly these electrons want to fill in the holes of those atoms over there. And the more badly these electrons want to get over there, the more stuff they will fight through to get over here. And that's where resistance will come in later on. Alright, now let's talk about amps and ohms. Now amps is just a way to measure current, and ohms is just a way to measure resistance. Now, the definition of current is just a flow of charge, usually electrons, through something. In electronics, it's generally a wire. And the definition of resistance is just how good something is at reducing the current. Think of resistance as like a road barrier, and the amperage, or the current, as sort of like the cars on the road. This resistance is going to limit how many cars can flow. However, if there's enough voltage difference between this point and this point, the more badly these electrons want to get from here to here, and the more they're going to try to overcome this resistance. So now I've drawn an easy path for the electrons from here to fill in those holes. And you can see how they all cancel out. And so these electrons actually flowing through here, that's essentially what current is. Now the way current is measured is it's one cool ohm of charge, basically it's just the number of electrons that flow through some given point per second. So, now that we know about voltage, current, and resistance, here's one of the most useful formulas in electronics, and it's Ohm's Law. Now what this is saying is that if you have this amount of current flowing through this amount of resistance, then in order for that to happen, you need to have this amount of voltage to make this true. If that makes any sense, we'll do an experiment in just a second. Now there's a few ways that you can write this, you can reorganize it, you can divide both sides by R, it's a simple algebra problem. Divide both sides by R, and you'll see that V divided by R is equal to I. Or you can also do it like this, you can divide both sides by I, and say that voltage divided by the, the current is going to equal the resistance, or that the resistance will equal the voltage divided by the current. There's, there's a few ways you can organize this equation. This is my personal favorite way to remember it because it's so easy to remember. V is equal to IR. Alright, now that we've covered volts, amps, and ohms, let's go over watts. 
So what are they? Well, a watt is just a measurement for power. And power is just the ability to do work. In other words, it's the power to make things do stuff. Now, electronically, it's defined as volts times amps. We'll be getting into that in just a second. Alright, here's that Watt's Law drawn out for you. And here you can see that when we multiply the current to the voltage, we'll end up with the number of watts going through our system. So say we have 12 volts at around 1 amp. Well, 1 times 12 is 12 watts. Alright, now that we're done with all that theoretical nonsense, let's apply all that theoretical nonsense to our real life application. I've drawn out Ohm's Law and Watt's Law, so that way you'll remember it. And here I've got a lamp powered by a 3 volt power supply, and I've measured the current to be about 218 milliamps through it. I want to power this with a USB from my laptop, but it supplies 5 volts with a maximum current of half an amp. I want to be sure that I don't fry the USB by overloading it for obvious reasons, and since I don't have a 5 volt power supply on hand, we're just going to have to do some calculations and see if the current draw is within limits. So in order to do this, we need to first figure out what the resistance of our lamp is. We don't know what it is, but we do know the amperage and the voltage. So we can solve for resistance very easily. We're just going to say that 3 volts is equal to the current, which is 280 milliamps, times the resistance. 280 milliamps, let's convert that to amps, because remember, it's volts times amps is equal to ohms. This needs to be in amps, and there's a thousand milliamps in an amp. Now to figure out what the ohms are, all we need to do is divide 3 by 0 0.28, and we should end up with the ohms. Alright, now that we've figured out what the resistance is going to be, let's make sure that we will not be drawing more than 500 milliamps. So like before, we're going to set up our equation, but this time we're going to set it up with 5 volts, and we're going to set our current to 10.7 ohms, and we're going to multiply that to I. Now to solve for this, just divide both sides by 10.7, and I figured out about a current draw of about 0 0.46 amps, or 460 milliamps. Alright, that's good. It means we won't be burning out our USB port on our computer. Alright, here's another great use for how you can use Ohm's Law to figure out how to power these LEDs. Now I'm trying to build a project that uses three LEDs powered by a 12 volt power supply, but if you have any experience with LEDs, you know that they can be very picky about the voltage you power them with. Slightly higher than the rated voltage, you'll burn them out. A little bit under the voltage that they're rated for, and they're not even going to be half as bright as they should be. Now at this exact voltage, LEDs draw 16 milliamps. So we need to figure out a way that we can drop the power supply voltage from 12 volts down to 9 volts and limit the current to 16 milliamps. Now we can easily do this with a resistor, but it can be a bit tricky figuring out the exact resistor to use. And most of the time people just guess. But here's how you can do it properly. So if you know what Ohm's Law is, that's actually all you need to know. Since we're trying to drop the voltage from 12 volts to 9 volts, we need to figure out what the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be. And that is 3 volts. So 12 minus 3 volts will give us 9 volts. So now that we know that the voltage drop has to be 3 volts, let's solve for Ohm's Law to make sure that only 16 milliamps of current will flow through here given the 12 volt power supply. This is actually very easy. Just plug in your numbers, 3 volts, because that's the drop across the resistor, is equal to the current, which has to be 16 milliamps, times the resistance. Now again, I've only taught you how to do Ohm's Law with volts is equal to amps times ohms, so we'll just stick with that logic for now. So 3 volts is equal to 0 0.016 amps times R, or ohms. So then it's just a simple calculation, 3 divided by 0 0.016, and that just so happens to be 187 ohms. Now if you have a resistor that's lying around that's not this exact value, that's okay. There's a bit of slack in this number. You can give or take 10% maybe. And you can certainly go with a higher value resistor because that means even less current will flow. 
So there's no problem with having a higher value resistor, just don't select one that's a too low a value or you risk damaging your LEDs. Alright, now you can see I got my 180 ohm resistor here and I'm actually powering all of my three LEDs to their full maximum brightness and they haven't burned out yet. So I'd say we're doing pretty good. Alright, this time we have a very similar situation, but I've changed out my LED for a much larger single LED, which requires 3 volts at 900 milliamps, or 0.9 amps. Now here's the resistor, and we have the 12 volt power supply over here. So this resistor has to drop 9 volts across it in order to drop the voltage from 12 volts to 3 volts. Now doing Ohm's law again, we can see that clearly we're going to need a 10 ohm resistor for this. So let's build up this circuit in real life and see what happens. Alright so here I've built up the circuit in real life. You can see my LEDs over here and my 10 ohm resistors right here. Let's flip the power switch and see what happens. Yeah we should probably turn off the power now. Whew, that's smelly. Yeah, I think we need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what the wattage should be. Okay, so back to the drawing board. So we built up the circuit in real life and we totally cooked our resistor. Poor resistor. Didn't like that at all, did it? So I think we're gonna have to take into account our wattage. Let's figure out how much power that resistor had to dissipate. We had 9 volts across it, and we had 0.9 amps of current going through it. Now that's a total of 8.1 watts across our resistor, and I only used a 1 half watt resistor. So we need a resistor that has a wattage of 8.1 watts. Now those aren't easy to come by, so yeah. So if you were to build this circuit in real life, you will need to have a 10 watt resistor. Luckily I have one of those offhand. And here it is in all of its glory. Now let's build a circuit again, this time using this resistor. Alright, now I've built up the circuit again, but this time I replaced that old wimpy half watt resistor with a much beefier 10 watt, 10 ohm resistor. Let's see how well the circuit performs this time. As you can see, our LED is burning nice and bright, and this thing's not even warm to the touch yet. However, when you're dissipating more than 8 watts of heat, you probably want to go ahead and connect this to a heatsink, just to be on the safe side. Yep, I can already feel it warming up in my hands quite a lot, so... Yeah. Get a heatsink on that puppy. Alright, I hope you found this video useful, and I hope you finally now understand the difference between voltage, current, resistance, and power, and how they're all related. Now, I one time heard the quote on the internet somewhere saying that volts push amps through ohms. Now, I don't remember where I heard that exactly, but I think that makes for a really nice conclusion, don't you? This has been a PowerMax production. If you like what I do, please like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check out my other videos, too.